Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord. Mel Thrutter, the famous rescue mission worker, was the son of a bartender who drank as much as he served. Thrutter followed in his father's footsteps, losing job after job because of his addiction to drinking and gambling. Each time he lost a job, he promised to reform and start doing it better. But each time he failed. After the death of his baby son, Thrutter made his way to Chicago, where he intended to drown himself in Lake Michigan. He had sold his shoes to get money for another drink and was walking barefoot through the snow towards his death when he went inside the Pacific Garden Mission and was saved. For the next 40 years, Trotter did everything he could to help those like himself who had fallen prey of the deceptively alluring temptations of sin. Satan's advertising is never realistic. He paints beautiful pictures of immediate pleasure, ignoring the real consequences that its participants must endure. If the beer companies run ads filled with crash cars, paralyzed drinkers, and tiny caskets of babies killed by drunk drivers, it will not help them sell their product. So they focus on the beginning rather than the ending. But no matter how beautiful the temptation appears, it is only a clock for the reality that sin always ends in pain heartbreak and judgment. As James 1.15 said, these desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. In these days where we remember the event that drastically changed the destiny of humanity, the Apostle of the Gentiles, Paul, wrote one of the most far-reaching passages in the Holy Scriptures. In the reflection for this day, we read in the letter to the Romans that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Letter to the Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 to 10. What is described in the letter to the Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 to 10, are two of the greatest verses related to salvation and faith in all the Holy Scriptures. Paul has made it clear that faith in Christ, including Christ's place on the cross, as our substitute in payment for our sin is the key to being declared righteous by our Supreme God. These two conditions, belief in the resurrection of Christ from the dead and the verbal confession of His place as Lord of all, serve as evidence that our faith is grounded in Christ. Anyone who trusts in Christ for his salvation that person will undoubtedly be saved. 
This is what the Apostle Paul affirmed in his statement made in the letter to the Romans. We are saved by sincere faith in Jesus and the grace of God. We must ask God to help us because it is more than just saying the words. If you declare that Jesus is Lord but live a wayward life or live as if you can do whatever you want without consequence or concern for offending God, then you have not really believed in your heart. As you can see, your heart plays an important role. It is the combination of both parts of the declaration, declaring with your mouth and believing in your heart that offers salvation. When you make a declaration from your heart that Jesus is Lord and truly believe that God raised him from the dead, your desires will naturally begin to shift towards a life that manifests that God is radically transforming your life. Christ is the only God-given means by which we can be saved. There is no other. It is important to understand the context of chapter 10. Paul has just concluded quoting the book of Deuteronomy. In that passage, God tells Israel that his mandate to them is not hidden, nor it is far away. It is already in their mouth and in their hearts. Paul has written that this is also true of the word of faith in Christ. This is a reference to the gospel, the message of salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. This message is so close to the mouth and heart of Israel. Paul clarifies what this word of faith is. He explicitly describes what the Jewish people of his time should receive in their mouth and hearts. He writes that instead of seeking to be righteous by following the law, they must confess with their mouths that Jesus is Lord. He is the Messiah. Furthermore, they must believe in their hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead. He tells them that if they do these things, they will be saved. The passage to which the apostle refers is the following. This command I am giving you today is not too difficult for you, and it is not beyond your reach. It is not kept in heaven so distant that you must ask who will go up to heaven and bring it down so we can hear and obey. It is not kept beyond the sea so far away that you must ask who will cross the sea to bring it to us so we can hear it and obey? No, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and your heart so that you can obey it. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 11 to 14. In the letter to the Romans, for three full chapters, Paul gives a long but emotional speech about the gospel and its relationship with the people of Israel. In chapter 9, Paul recounts Israel's past history and focuses on God's sovereignty and His unchanging promises, His divine election, and God's unchanging plan, particularly in relation to His people Israel. We find some help in understanding the word confess from the Greek origin, homologeo, the root homo, which means the same, and logeo, say or speak, then is to say the same thing or to agree. To confess means to share a common opinion or to concede or admit that something is true. Confessing the Lord Jesus simply means admitting and declaring that Jesus is who God said He is, the Savior, Messiah. Given the emphasis in the context of Israel's lack of faith to ensure God's justice, confess seems to be used in the light of Deuteronomy 30, 11-14, to refer to the need for Israel to be in agreement with God 
that justice is only through the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ. As Paul taught, God's righteousness does not come through our efforts or whatever we do in this life. It comes only through the faith in God's testimony about the divine Savior, Jesus. What it requires is that we humbly accept that without Jesus we cannot achieve forgiveness of our sins. It's that simple because we confess through our lips and believe in our hearts that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and there is salvation in no one else. As in the heartbreaking story of Abraham and his son Isaac, God asked that father to give his son as a sacrifice, a man who at 100 years of age, together with his 90-year-old wife, Sarah, would have a son whose offspring would be like the son of the sea, promised by God himself, Jehovah, ask for a test of his faith. Of course, he would never allow Abraham to consummate that act. The Lord saw the strong faith of that man, and although his heart was torn with anguish and pain, he was willing to obey God. That is why Abraham is considered the father of faith. If God asked something like this of you, would you have enough faith to act? This event was a silhouette of what God would do in the future by giving His Son Jesus as atonement for the sins of all mankind. Such was Abraham's faith, and such is God's unwavering and faithful love for us. Have you ever thought about the vast number of human beings that have existed since the creation of Adam and Eve? Just to put this in context, do you know what the current population of our planet is? By November 15, 2022, our planet reached 8 billion inhabitants. And although the number of inhabitants in the approximately 6,000 years since creation may seem so large and incalculable, some put an estimate of 117 billion. The love of God and the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross surpasses to cover every word of curse, every sin, every bad intention, every bad thought, and every offense committed from the day Adam was created until the last human being that will be born before the end of time. The statement in John 3.16 has a scope and magnitude beyond human comprehension. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John chapter 3 and verse 16. A little boy and his father were driving down a country road on a beautiful spring afternoon. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a bumblebee flew in the car window. Since the little boy was deadly allergic to the bee stings, he became petrified. His father quickly reached out, grabbed the bee, squeezed it in his hand, and then released it. But as soon as he let it go, the young son became frantic once again as it passed by the little boy. The father sensed his son's terror, and once again he reached out his hand, but this time he pointed to this hand. There, stuck in his skin, was the stinger of the bee. You see this? He asked. You don't need to be afraid anymore. I have taken the sting for you. The Christian does not need to be afraid of death, because Christ has taken the sting out of death and sin. My dear friend and brother. These days, we remember the painful and unique sacrifice of Jesus. It is a time to reflect on the value that today represents the forgiveness of our sins. 
It is a moment for you to thank from the bottom of your heart the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And if you who listens to me have not yet received it in your heart, this day surrender your life to the only means of salvation that this humanity has. And as we could say, Christ died for sin. Believers died to sin and unbelievers will die in sin. The decision is yours, only yours. Heavenly Father, thank you that your only begotten Son came to this earth to die on the cross and rise again so that all who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Thank you that all who confess that Jesus is Lord the eternal God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and believe in their hearts that he rose from the dead, will not perish, but will have the eternal life that you have promised. We thank you all in Jesus' name. Amen.